Hello guys, this is Vaseem from Edureka and I welcome you all to this session where I'll be talking about Python requests. So without wasting any more time, let's take a look at the agenda for this session. So first of all, we will start with what exactly is Python request and why do we use it in Python? And after that, we will discuss how we can install Python request on our system and make get and post request as well. Moving further, we will learn about cookies and headers and session objects as well. And finally, I will sum up this session with errors and exceptions and a small use case to show the functionality of Python request. I hope you guys are clear with the agenda. Also, I suggest you to subscribe to the Edureka channel and also press the bell icon to get the latest updates from Edureka. Now, without any further ado, let's try to understand what is Python requests. Request in Python is a module which can be used to send all kinds of HTTP requests. It is very easy to use and has features like passing parameters in the URL and passing custom headers as well. It is a human friendly HTTP library as it also suggests on the official documentation page as well. And it is one of the most downloaded Python library with more than 400,000 downloads every day. So you can imagine the popularity of Python request guys. It was written by Kenneth Wright and has a license under Apache 2.0. So this is about Python request guys. I hope you are clear with what exactly is Python request. So now that we have learned what is Python request, let's take a look at the advanced features that Python requests come with. So first of all, we have keep alive and connection pooling and then we have elegant key value cookies. Then coming on to the next one, we have international domains and URLs and automatic decompression as well. And then we have sessions with cookies persistence and Unicode response bodies. Then we have browser style SSL verification and HTTPS proxy support as well. There is automatic content decoding and multi part file uploads. And then there is basic authentication and streaming downloads as well. And last but not least, we have connection timeouts and chunk requests. So these are all the advanced feature, guys. Don't worry. We'll be learning about how we can use Python requests. So let's talk about why exactly do we need Python requests or why are we using Python requests? So the reason behind this is pretty simple guys. We use Python request because you don't have to manually add the queries to your URLs and form encode post data. And that is a reason enough to use Python request guys. And if you're not able to understand this reason behind using the Python request, you'll be able to understand this later on in the session when I'll be showing you the use case. So hang in there. Now that we are done with the reason behind why we are using Python request, Let's try to understand how you can install Python request on your system or on the project that you're working on. So first of all, you have to install the pip environment on your system and then you have to run this command that I'm going to tell you inside the terminal, which is pip install request guys. So let's take it up to PyCharm and I'll show you how you can install request on your project or on your system guys. Now, as you can see, I have a new project over here inside PyCharm. So I'll show you guys how you can install request on your system. So you have to open the terminal here. Just write pip install requests and you will see that the files are being installed here. It will take some time guys and there is one more approach to this. If you are using PyCharm, you can open the settings and inside the settings you will find the project interpreter and over there you can simply add the request library and that will do the job for you guys. It is same as running this command inside terminal. Okay, I'll show you that as well. So you open settings and here you will go to the project where you will find the project interpreter. And over here, you can simply just add your file. Let's search requests here. And this is by author Kenneth Rights that I have told you guys. So I'll just install this package. And it will not take so much time because we have already installed it. And as you can see, we have requests over here inside the. So you can see the request over here, which has all the files and everything for our project. So I'll just type OK, close the terminal. And over here, I will make one demo file, guys, to show you. How you can make get and post request. So we have this file. Let's enter. Okay, let's first of all talk about making get and post request, guys. So we have installed uh, request on our system, guys. So let me talk about get request. What exactly are they used for and how are we going to use them inside the tutorial I'm going to show you or the use case as well. So get request are basically used to request the data from the server. So what you have to do is I'll show you the syntax as well. So you just have to import the request library and then you will have to make one response object in which in this case R is the response object and you are going to use the request library and make the get request and inside the get function you have to mention the URL that you're going to make the request from. So let's take it up to PyCharm guys. I'll show you how you can make the get request. 
so let's enter the presentation mode for better visibility so i'll just import the request library yes and i'll make one response variable or response object and inside this i will use request dot get and inside this i will have to specify one url guys so i'll just show you what url i'm going to use so what i'm going to do is i'll just copy the url over here and when i make the print statement i will use the response object and let's get the text over here using the response object whatever we have on the server and when, when i run this i will be getting the text for this url that i've just provided as you can see over here so this is how you can make a get request guys now let me show you how you can actually pass parameters inside your url also so what i'll do is i'll just make one variable let's say payload and inside this i will specify a dictionary with some values let's say key one and value one okay so when i pass this inside the get function with the parameter that is params is equal to that is the parameter variable guys so i'll just uh, pass payload over here and when i get the url now i should be getting this parameter that i have just passed inside the url so you will be getting this dictionary of the value that i've just passed as a parameter inside the url so this is how you actually pass parameters inside your url guys while you're making the get request similarly you can also pass custom headers as well i'll be showing you that later on in the session so we have talked about making get request guys so let me just talk about how you can make the post request as well so we'll talk about what exactly post requests are used for so basically post requests are used to submit the data to be processed to the server so let me show you an example with the syntax first of all you have to import the request library and then you have to use the post function as well using the request keyword after that you have to mention your url and the data that you want to give it as a payload or something like that and then you have the response variable as well or response object so let me take it up to pycharm guys you will be able to understand this better in pycharm so instead of get request we'll get post over here and instead of parameters we'll just pass this as data so instead of uh, text okay we'll just get the text again so let's see what are we getting so we don't have post request allowed inside this so instead of get we'll just write post over here run it again as you can see so we have this dictionary that i added using the post request guys these are the headers and then we have cookies as well no we don't and uh, this is how you can actually make a post request guys i hope you are clear with making the post request and get request guys so this is all about making a post and get request guys also i want to show you what are all the content or the response content that you get using these requests so let me just take one response object again i'll make a get request so i'll just pass the url over here and we are good to go so we will print whatever we'll get so using the response object let's see the content type or what all content we can get so we can get text we can get headers cookies and then there is status code let's check the status code first guys if the status code is 200 we are good to go it is 200 guys so we'll get some more content from this so we'll get cookies now it will be showing us the cookies inside our cookie jar yes we are getting the cookies inside the cookie jar and we can also pass our own cookies i'll be telling you about that in, later on in the session don't worry guys so then there is headers as well you'll see all these headers inside a dictionary guys so this is how you actually access the headers inside a url and then there is the content format also you can get the content in the format of json as you can see we're getting the content as json objects so this is all about response content guys now let me get to the next topic that we have which is cookies and headers guys so i've just shown you how you can get the cookies and headers inside using the response variable so let me just talk about what are cookies and headers guys so we can view the server's response headers using a python dictionary which i have just shown you guys so the dictionary is special though it's just made for the http headers and similarly you can get the cookies as well if a response contains some cookies you can quickly access them and to send your own cookies to the server you can just use the cookies parameter and cookies are returned inside a request cookie jar which acts like a dictionary but also offers a more complete interface suitable for over multiple domains or parts so let's try to understand this inside pycharm guys so what we'll do is we'll just get some cookies here and when i run this we are getting a cookie jar okay guys what i've done is i have actually changed the url so what i'll do is i'll run this command now and you will be seeing the cookies over here which is inside the request cookie jar and what i can do is i can also 
pass my own cookies so I'll take a variable name it cookies and give it a dictionary guys and inside the dictionary I'll specify some values let's say key one is equal to value one and then over here using the cookies parameter I will just pass cookies here so I'll just write text over here and when I run this I should be getting a dictionary with the cookie jar which actually has the cookies named as key one and value one so this is how you can actually make your own cookies inside a web server and then I'll show you what you can do with headers as well so let's get the headers here when I run this I should be getting the headers inside this URL which are all these headers over here inside the dictionary so this is how you can actually access the headers inside the URL guys so let me talk about session objects guys which is the next topic that we have so session object actually allows us to persist certain parameters across request so it also persists cookies across all requests made from the session instance and will use the url library 3 connection pooling and if you're making the several requests to the same host the underlying tcp connection will be reused which can result in a significant performance increase and also a session object has all the methods of the main request api as well so let's try to persist some cookies across the request guys so we'll move to the pycharm again so we have come to the pycharm now what i'll do is i'll make one variable let's say session object that is so i'll use request dot session and after that i'll just use a get statement where i'll just use s dot get pass the url and we're good to go then what i'll do is i'll make a response object and inside the response object i will pass one more variable or url which is this one now what i'll do is i'll just print response dot text let's see what happens as you can see we have persisted one cookie so this was all about session objects guys and any dictionaries that you pass to a request method will be merged with the session level values that are set and the method level parameters override the session parameters as well and you have to consider that method level parameters will not be persisted across requests even if making a session as well so now that we are done with session objects let's take a look at errors and exceptions that we have for python request guys so first of all in the event of a network problem for example a dns failure or a refused connection request will raise a connection error exception and it will raise a http error if the http request returned an unsuccessful status code which is actually 405 or 404 as well now if a request times out a timeout exception is raised and if a request exceeds the configured number of maximum redirections a too many redirects exception is raised so this is all about errors and exceptions that we have in python request guys so now that we are done with errors and exceptions let me talk about a small use case that i have made using the django app so we will exit the presentation mode over here and i will open the project that i had made So as you can see I have a Django file over here with all the init settings.py urls.py so I have over here the URL configurations and everything and I have a views.py file inside my app that I had created so this has the code for making a request to a web API and inside that I will be able to search for a particular city and I will be getting the description of the weather and the temperature over there and the condition of the weather over there so I will show you this and this is my template guys. So let me run the server guys. And if you're wondering how you can actually make a web app, I suggest you check out the Edureka tutorial for Django web applications where you will be able to learn how you can make a web app from scratch guys. So when I run my server, I should be getting a URL guys. So that's where I have to actually make the request. So as you can see, I have a city London over here specified first of all. So when I open this first of all I have a heading which is saying what is the weather like then I have the icon which is saying it has broken clouds then there is London city name and the temperature in Fahrenheit so let's see if I can do that since I'm making request to the API when I change the city over here I should be getting the temperature of the city again so when I refresh this now as you can see I've changed the city as well but I'm getting the temperature of the city that I have just specified guys so as you can see how easy it is to make request to a web server and get these values so i'm making this request to this url guys which i have specified over here open weather map api this provides us the api 
and I'm able to search for cities over there inside the request that I'm making and this is how you can actually make a simple Django app for calculating or getting the weather of a city using the request library guys. So now that we have come to the end of the session. I hope you guys are clear with the concept of Python requests and if you have any questions you can put them in the comment section and I suggest you to subscribe to the Edureka channel to get more exciting videos and also press the bell icon to get the latest updates from Edureka. Thank you guys and have a nice day. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!